Welcome to Heaven's Declare. I'm Jim Burr, and today we're going to share you share with you the power of the atom. The power in the atom is beyond anything you can comprehend, anything you can imagine. I'll tell you, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made. Jesus said, "All power is given me in heaven and earth," and you know, we, we have nuclear reactors where we have the fission process where we split the atom. But the sun fuses the atom. The difference between splitting the atom and fusing the atom is 17 times. There's 17 times more power in the nuclear reaction of, fu of, of fusing the atoms than splitting the atom. The problem with fusing is uh, it's dangerous. Uh, you know, uranium is dangerous to handle, dangerous, dangerous you can have a meltdown, the rods are dangerous to dispose of. Uh, and, uh, but with the nuclear reactor, with the, with the splitting of the atom, we can actually control that. The problem with the hydrogen uh, fusing, it is so powerful we can't control it. I mean, it's great for making bombs, you want to blow things up, but to try to run our planet uh, is really, I mean, it's there. We've got some 50 year projects. They tell us maybe we've been working on this for decades to try to harness the sun, to try to create a sun on Earth. And they tell us that maybe another 30 years or 50 years before they can throw the switch to harness what happens on the sun because it is so incredibly powerful, the fusing of the atoms and how this sun can crank out energy for billions of years. They tell us it's good for another 5 billion years. And it's, and it's just amazing how uh, those hydrogen atoms fuse together to form helium. Helium is heavier and it sinks and sets up rotation in the sun. But to, to illustrate the power in the atom, God put that, I believe God spoke that, in a penny. Those atoms are bound together so tight in there, if you could totally release the energy in one little penny, would be equi equivalent to the chemical energy of 2.2 million gallons of gasoline in a penny. It's just unbelievable power. In a paper clip, they say if you could totally release the atom, the energies in the atom, the binding energy, actually they call it the binding energy, um, this would be equal to 18,000 tons of TNT. 18,000 tons of pay. Folks, the, the power in the atom. So we're looking at the sun. We're looking at our planet saying, we need energy, we need energy. You know, if we can just harness the sun, if we can just figure out how to harness the sun, it would solve our energy problems. For, so uh, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory has been working on this project. Well, actually, they've been working on it in France. Uh, we have uh, a tokamak in France. But first, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, to run San Francisco for one year, the city of San Francisco, one year, on the energy it needs, take 21 million boxcars of coal. 21 million boxcars of coal. If we could harness the sun, if we could release the power that's fusing the atoms together, you, San Francisco could run on 500 gallons of seawater for a year. 500 gallons of seawater would replace 21 million boxcars of coal. So you see why we're desperately looking at a way to do this. Now, uh, the formula that we're all familiar with is E, energy equals mass times the speed of light square. And so what that tells us, a very small amount of matter can create a tremendous, tremendous amount of energy. And to help us understand that a little bit, uh, let me uh, put it this way. E equals mc squared tells us that matter can be turned into energy. And when it does, the energy gets multiplied by the speed of light squared, which is 57, 56 billion miles per second. That formula, E, energy, and it's the it, equivalence of mass and energy. This is matter. And, and Einstein said all matter is a form of energy. And if you could convert matter into energy, you can also convert energy into matter. And they're doing that in, in, in Switzerland at the Hadron Collider. We've actually proven uh, Psalm 33, verse 6 is the theory of relativity. E equals, I mean, they have proven that, the Bible says, by the word of the Lord. The word is power, isn't it? God could speak 
the light coming out of his mouth, 186,000 miles a second. God could speak the energy, the power in his voice could call atoms into existence. And when we go to Hedron Collider, they take like a million dollars worth of electricity every day. They burn that much electricity to slam these protons together or near the speed of light. And they actually produce more particles. They actually produce matter. They did creation. Hedwin Collider is doing creation actually with enough energy. And so we see the power of God, this incredible power uh, that could call the universe into existence. And to me, it's just amazing, incredible, incredible to think that in a paperclip would be enough energy equivalent to 18 kilotons, 18,000 tons of TNT. So it's exciting to see the word of the Lord where the heavens made it. It's exciting to see that I believe the Hadron Collider proves that scripture by the word of the Lord. Jesus says, all power is given to me in heaven and earth. And, um, and so whenever you convert a piece of matter to pure energy, the resulting energy is defined by moving it at the speed of light. So that's the definition for converting uh, matter to energy squared. Okay, the speed of light squared. So the speed of light squared is the conversion factor that decides just how much energy lies within a chunk of matter. Okay, the speed of light squared, the speed of light times itself, is the conversion factor that decides just how much energy lies within a chunk of matter. And because the speed of light is squared, it's a huge number, 56 billion miles per second. The amount of energy bound up in even the smallest mass is truly mind boggling. If you could turn every one of the atoms in a paperclip to pure energy is 18 kilotons of TNT, that power folks, that's power. Do you think your problems <laughs> are too big for the Lord? Oh, the depths of wisdom, the depths of, oh, the depths of riches, both of wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. And I have found an interesting statement. You think that's power, <laughs> that power? <laughs> 18 kilotons of TNT, 2.2 million gallons of chemical energy of 2.2 million gallons worth of gasoline. Guess what we're told in the book Steps to Christ. Satan knows better than God's people that the power they can have over him when their strength is in Christ. Satan knows better that. He's just saying, God's people, we don't know the power that we can have over Satan when our strength is in Christ. You, my friend, Humbly entreat the mighty conqueror for help. Put your name there. <laughs> Put your name there. You can humbly entreat the mighty conqueror for help. The weakest believer in truth, relying firmly upon Christ, can successfully repel Satan and all his hosts. That comes from uh, 1 Testimony 3.41. And uh, Jesus said, You shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. The right hand of power. Yes, we're talking about power today. Um, and uh, if we could solve the, you know, we could solve the energy problems if we could harness the sun. And so we have desperate attempts to do that. This sun gives off this tremendous amount of energy. Actually, the amount that, we, you know, Earth, we're 93 million miles from the sun. We're way out here, this tiny little planet, way out here. And the amount of energy that we actually, the sun radiates in every direction. Where does that go? Well, the earth gets about one half of one ten millionth of the energy of the sun. About one half of one ten millionth, okay? That's uh, six, seven, that's uh, eight, about eight zeros, okay? Um, so atomic energy, hydrogen energy, if we could fuse the sun, you know, the, if we could fuse the atoms, in deuterium, heavy, heavy hydrogen, uh, seawater, we could solve our energy problems. And so we're looking at, um, uh, France has been big, really, really big in, uh, in energy, nuclear reactors. And uh, we have the tokamak, that's a, an acronym actually for toroidal magnetic uh, device. And um, so the 
this thing is huge. You can see, if you look carefully, you see a little man standing down there on the, uh, the left part. This thing is being built. 35 nations are working together to build this in France. And the idea is it's going to solve, they're hoping that it will solve the energy problems. Um, the problem is, how do you hold hydrogen at 100 million degrees, or 150 or 200 million degrees? How do you hold it? Well, the concept here is you create a magnetic field which focuses the hydrogen away from the wall. I mean, it would melt, uh, the sun temperature would melt everything on Earth, everything we know of, platinum, I mean, everything gets melted at that temperature. But by creating this big, intensive magnet donut, uh, it can actually keep the hydrogen away from the walls and melting the reactor down. And what they're trying to do is to slam these, uh, these atoms together you know, now the world record for fusion, okay, this is the fusion process. The world record is held by the European Tokamak jet, and uh, it produced 16 million watts of fusion power, okay, 16 million watts, but it took 24 million to get the job done. <laughs> so it's not profitable yet. The uh, new one in, uh, in France is, is called Inter ITER. And it's designed to produce tenfold uh, return on energy. They expect that there will be, uh, it'll take, uh, let's see, um, it'll be 500 megawatts of fusion power from 50 megawatts of input. So they're f hoping to have a tenfold increase, but they think that it may take uh, 30 years before they can throw the switch. So here's man's attempt to create a sun on Earth. And uh, we have 100 billion suns in our Milky Way galaxy. So Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories is also designing a, a concept to create fission, fusion uh, energy. And uh, here you see, uh, coming up, you see the um, uh, facility at uh, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. Now this is $20 billion they were spent on this facility, 20 billion, okay? And uh, their concept is a little bit different than the one that happens in, in, uh, in the Tokamak in France. And uh, we, have had, we have over 160 institutes around the world that, uh, that have used the, the Tokamak, you know. Uh, Princeton had one, but uh, they were not able to produce enough energy to run your hair dryer with it. It was, it was not profitable. But the new concept at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory is to take a laser uh, and 192 lasers amplify them one quadrillion times. So they take each laser, 192 lasers, lasers go through these tubes, and the tubes actually will amplify the lasers. And uh, here you see the tubes, a mile long. So each laser goes through a tube a mile long, and it, it amplifies it one quadrillion times. And then they focus it on a little capsule. Uh, well, first uh, of all, actually, we have... Uh, uh, a picture of the facility. Now, they don't want to melt California off the map. Um, so here's the lasers being focused at a capsule. This little capsule has uh, a little, this container has a little capsule actually of, of uh, deuterium. Here's the, the actual facility. Uh, we see a lot of steel and cement, and uh, they're, uh, you know, trying to prevent melting California off the map with that, so they've got to contain this uh, you know, this, this event. They're going to focus 192 lasers on the capsule that you see there in the lower right hand, uh, left hand corner. And here's the deuterium, a little capsule that they're going to use to fire the 192 lasers. And coming up is the actual capsule. Here's an actual capsule, ceramic capsule, where the little bead goes in there. And so 192 lasers are going to focus on that. And uh, these lasers have been heated to you know, 10 quadrillion, or 20 quadrillion, uh, actually, uh, they're, they're 20 trillionths of a second. They can only fire them for 20 trillionths of a second, but they've been heated, uh, amplified 110 quadrillion times. So, I mean, it, it's unbelievable uh, what they do. But so they fire that into that little capsule, okay? But they can only leave it on for 20 trillionths of a second. They fire 192 lasers into that capsule of heavy hydrogen. They can only leave it on for 20 trillionths of a second. 
because they don't want to melt California off the map. I mean, this is this incredible power in the, in the atom. Now, they have to wait eight hours for it to cool off. So they fire the lasers. They wait eight hours. They can fire it three times a day. They have to wait eight hours to cool it down. But to understand this another way, if it's 20 uh, trillionths of a second, it means they would have to fire this laser 20 trillion times to accumulate one second of on time. You get the picture. <laughs> And so in February, I think it was 2000, uh, uh, 2014, uh, yeah, February 2014, they actually proved the sun works. At that little capsule, that little focus point, they put in 10,000 uh, joules of energy and they got 17,000 joules out. Well, <laughs> how many joules did it take? to amplify that. Now, I can't tell you how many watts this is because uh, joules are a factor of time. And, uh, and so it's like one, uh, one amp for one second. So we'd have to figure the time into this mathematically and tell you how many joules. Uh, but they put in 10,000 in the focus, in the little capsule point, 10,000 joules. And they got out 17,000. So they proved they could actually create fusion, although it took 500 trillion joules. <laughs> to run that facility that you saw. Now, here's a match. If, if this was heated to the temperature of the core of the sun, this building, bricks and vapor and steel would be vapor. It would be a hole in the ground. If, if we could heat this to the temperature of the core of the sun, this would, 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 would burn you at 100 miles. A match heated to the temperature of the core of the sun at 100 miles would scorch you. Uh, and so, then in February of 2014, it was World Headlines, Wall Street Journal, you know, a huge breakthrough. World Headlines, a huge breakthrough. We've actually accomplished something here, and we've created 10,000 joules. It said, a star is, this is in Wall Street Journal, a star is born, the U.S. scores a fusion power breakthrough. News flash from, it was the Wall Street Journal, went around the world. Okay, <laughs> so we put in, 10,000 joules, we got 17,000 out. Now, we have spent $20 billion, okay, on this facility, we spent $20 billion. We have 2,000 scientists, 2,000 scientists to create this. How would you feel if you spend your lifetime trying to create a sun, and the biggest sun you could create was no bigger than the head of a match? <laughs> okay? 20 billion dollars, and that is all we have accomplished, is the, you look at the sun in the sky, is that sun glorious? That sun's big, that sun's hot, that sun's glorious, the stars all disappear when the sun comes out, that's glorious. You know what God says, I am the Lord, that is my name, I will not share my glory with anyone else. Folks, this is the glory of man, this is the glory of 20 billion dollars, 2,000 scientists. This is what we've been able to achieve. This is the glory of man. God says, I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not share my glory with anyone else. I guess we could say that, you know, uh, the Bible says, by wisdom, the uh, Lord made the heavens for his mercy endures forever. Psalm 136, 5. By wisdom, you think there's a lot of wisdom in those 2,000 scientists, a lot of education, those 2,000 scientists? with mathematicians, chemists, you know, physicists. By wisdom, the Lord made the heavens for his mercy endures forever. And we could say by wisdom and $20 billion and 2,000 scientists, they made a sun the size of the head of a match. <laughs> okay, so what's interesting, if these scientists are not Christian, they don't believe in God, you know what they would have to say? You know, here we spend our life trying to create a sun on earth. This is all we can do. This is all we can do, head of a match. But they say, you know, the sun, on the sun, everything was just right. It just happened. The sun just happened. It was all just right. It just happens. Oh, we have 100 billion or 200 billion in the Milky Way galaxy. 100, 200 billion times, everything was just right. Those stars just happened. And we have a hundred billion galaxies, or two hundred billion, ga each galaxy with a hundred billion stars times a hundred billion, multiply a hundred billion times a hundred billion. It was just right, it just happened. 
but this is all we can do with our smarts, our intelligence. This is all man can do toward creating a sun on earth, <laughs> heat a little capsule the size of a head of a match for 20 trillionths of a second. I am the Lord, that is my name, and will not share my glory with anyone else. Well, that's not the end of the story, folks. That's not the end of the story, because evolution, the Big Bang Theory says, you know, we know that when, let's put the sun over here and the Big, let's we'll put the Big Bang over here and the sun over here, okay? So these scientists say, you know, in the Big Bang, we're pretty sure that was created hydrogen, helium, deuterium, trinium, uh, trace amounts of beryllium. So we have our theory what happened in the Big Bang, but they look at the sun and they go like, it doesn't match our theory of the Big Bang. We don't see that. So how do you explain that? Well, we've got to invent some more <laughs> magic. <laughs> um, they say, well, you know, that when we look at the sun, we don't see heavier elements. I mean, the, the sun can't fuse anything heavier than iron. So the heavier elements we don't see in the sun. But we, we've talked about these exploding stars. We pretty much know that, there, that these big giant stars like Betelgeuse, Betelgeuse may have already exploded, Betelgeuse and Orion. It's like a billion miles in diameter. These big stars seem to, you burn up their fuel, expand, and they get bigger and bigger like a balloon. We have an explosion. They pop. And then this gas just goes shooting out. They're very, very bright. Sometimes they can be seen in the daytime. And in that process, even though we haven't seen one explode in the Milky Way galaxy uh, since the invention of the telescope for 400 years, uh, we see it in other areas, like other galaxies. And then looking at, you know, they can analyze the uh, elements present in starlight. You pass it through a prism, a spectrometer, and uh, you use the, uh, the absorption lines, and you can tell what, uh, what elements are present in every star. And so they say, when we look at uh, you know, we look at our sun, we don't see the heavier elements, and uh, they theorize what was made in the Big Bang, and it doesn't match, so they, they say what happens is in the, in the exploding stars, the, the supernova eruptions, we create heavier elements than iron. And so, you, read the books. Read the books. What it says, here's what it says in the books. <laughs> our sun just, everything was just right, it just happened. Here's what it says in the books. Our sun was kick-started. We had to kick-start the sun with more than one exploding supernova stars to give our sun the heavier elements because we say this is made in the Big Bang. We don't see the elements in our sun. So we had to kick-start it with more than one multiple exploding stars contribute the heavier elements that we see in the sun. Well, I've already told you, uh, you know, before uh, we, we talked about uh, the fact that these, uh, you know, th these heavier elements are produced in the uh, supernova eruptions, and it doesn't match. So evolution's got a real problem, you know. Uh, Twenty billion stars just happened, just happened. Everything was just right. It just happened. No, I believe the Bible. It says, "By the word of the Lord were the heavens made." By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. And we can now, through the Hedron Collider, we can see that that scripture is, is correct. That the power of God has this incredible power. He could call anything into existence. Um, 100 billion stars. What a creator. Um, the Hedron Collider, the Large Hedron Collider, is known for smashing protons together. The energy from these collisions gets converted into matter, producing new particles that allow us to explore the nature of the universe. Yes, as I was sharing with you before, Jesus said, all power is given to me in heaven. Earth. We're talking about power, folks. We're talking about power. When you can look at the, uh, you know, the penny, and, uh, and realize that in the power in the atom that God spoke into the atom in all matter, God put that power there because he says, all power is given to me in heaven and earth. And uh, the penny, which would contain, uh, if you could release the energy that binds those atoms together, uh, you could have 2.2 million gallons of gasoline. The little paper clip, I disappeared here on me. A paper clip, if you could remove the energy in the atoms in one paperclip, you would have 
18,000 tons of TNT in a paper. It's, it's unbelievable power. You know, I like that story about the prodigal son. Uh, to close our program today, as, as I wind our time down, uh, you know, that father was looking down that road. And every day, that father was looking down that road. Is my boy coming home? Is my boy coming home? And the reason we know that, you know, the, the Bible says that the father met him a great way off. He didn't wait for him to come knocking on the door. <laughs> that father, whatever he was doing, whatever he was doing, he was keeping an eye on that road, and he saw that son coming down that road. And he went to meet the, that son. That's like God coming to meet us, okay? And if you look, there's a wonderful little book, Christ's Object Lessons. And it says in there that, if you take one step toward the Savior, and this is the prodigal taking one step home to illustrate the goodness of God, the love of God. It's, if you take one step toward the Savior, he will enfold you in his arms of infinite love. It says, never a prayer is offered, however faltering. Are your prayers faltering? Sometimes you go to sleep when you're talking to the Lord. Sometimes I have to apologize. Lord, I'm sorry. I called you up and put you on hold. My mind wandered. <laughs> I dozed off. And, and so, uh, never a prayer is offered, however faltering. Your prayers are faltering sometimes. Never a tear is shed, however secret. But the Spirit of God goes forth to meet it. Now, I left out one word because the, the text says, if you take even, even one step toward the Savior, is that an important word? That indicates you've turned around and you've taken even, if you just take even one step toward the Savior, he will enfold you in his arms of infinite love. Never a prayer is offered, however faltering. Never a tear is shed, however secret, but the Spirit of God goes forth to meet it. And it, even, it goes on even before the prayer is made. Folks, we have an infinite God. Moses said, let me see your glory. And God says, I will make my goodness pass before. God is so good. He has given us a thousand foods. Do you know he's given us 20,000 herbs and spices? He wouldn't have had to give you cinnamon and garlic and oregano. 20,000 herbs and spices. He satisfies your mouth with good things. Yes, the goodness of the Lord God said, I will make my goodness pass before you. When Moses said, let me see your glory, I would think of something spectacular, but God said, I will make my goodness pass before you. Well, our time is gone again. Join us next week as we continue Heaven's Declare. Thank you for watching.